Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Gaffering Gear. Today we're going to go through some V-Lock and D-Tap um, battery accessories which I think would be really really handy. Now neither of these are sponsored or have been supplied to me for review. I just really really like them. So the first one we'll have a look at is from Tether Tools. They call it their on-site D-Tap to AC adapter. So basically you plug uh, this end into your battery and you get two power outlets that give you a maximum of 200 watts AC. So that's a really handy thing to have on set. And the next thing is, um, this is called a shark fin. So basically it's, uh, basically you mount two V-Lock batteries together and uh, uh, join them and use them as one battery. So let's have a look at uh, why I have these things and where I use them. Okay, so let's have a, a look at this unit. So basically uh, you get two power outlets, a maximum 200 watts draw and you also get four um, uh, USB outlets. Now the USB outlets aren't so crash hot, but they're a nice extra. Basically the USB outlets, um, they're 2.4 amps each, but the grand total that you can run is um, six amps, so uh, 6.2 amps. So not awesome, but it's good that they're there. Now, um, in terms of the power outlets, um, they are regulated. So basically this is an inverter. This is the uh, 220 volt version, which is regulated at 50 hertz. They have a 120 volt version, which is 60 hertz. So uh, basically, I'll just run you through it. You uh, plug it in, pretty straightforward. Now, the unit does have uh, reverse polarity protection. So if you've got a battery that's got the rubber connectors and you can easily get the um, D-tap in the wrong way, you won't blow this up. If that happens, just wait a couple of minutes and it will reset. So you've got an on-off switch here. Now basically you wait till the, there's a little red light here, wait till that turns green and then you're ready to plug in. So where I primarily use this is running prac lamps. So I'll have a job where um, we might be uh, in the middle of a field and they want a desk with a, a, some practical lamps on it, some surreal setup or whatever. And the art department always gives me a, 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 a practical lamp and says, can you run this off a battery? And the usual answer is no. Uh, but now I can if it's under 200 watts. So basically uh, just plug it in and uh, fire away. So basically super handy. Now where this would be uh, really good and, and how I found out about this is I had a, a client who was looking at um, buying this to run a client monitor. So basically instead of buying an expensive film and television monitor that runs off VLOC batteries for the, for the agency to watch, they just wanted to get a cheap television, LED television set and power it off this. So this is how I found out about this. And basically I thought I might as well buy one because when I looked into it, this thing only costs 80 or 90 US dollars. I think it's 90 US bucks. So it's so cheap, you might as well have it for that time that it comes in handy. Have a listen to the noise coming off that. So look, I don't think it'd be, I think it'd be a problem if you had it right next to where you were filming, but if you had it say where, where you'd typically have a charging station, you know, running your, uh, running your data wrangling or anything like that, uh, I don't think it would be a problem. Um, look, one thing I want to point out, when you buy any sort of inverter system, you want to make sure that you get a sine wave or a modified sine wave inverter. Uh, not a square wave inverter. So this one is a modified sine wave. So that basically means it is safe to run computers uh, and electronics on this thing. It won't, it won't damage the electronics. If you have a square wave inverter and you use one of those, which is what I did when I started, basically the equipment that you plug into it resonates. Um, it, it vibrates and makes a sound and it damages the components over time. So this is safe to use, uh, use with computers. So things like uh, uh, you know, your data wrangling station, uh, you could power that off this. All right, so let's, um, let's plug in the, uh, the meter and have a look. Now this is the um, 230, sorry, 220 volt, um, 50 hertz AC version. Now I'm getting 228 volts, okay? So it's a bit high, so it's got a bit of leeway to drop down. Now I've never seen this get below 226 and I've put about 150 watts on it. Now let's check the frequency. So the frequency is coming in at 49.35 hertz. So, you know, that's okay. That's on an average with about um, some suburbs in Melbourne. Um, so, you know, perfectly fine in that regard. 
Okay, you can also get this for the uh, the inverter. It's a uh, cigarette lighter to detap adapter, which enables you to run the inverter off car power. So you could run the inverter uh, whilst you're driving from location to location off your car power. So that might be something that's worth getting, and this is only 17 US dollars. So look, really, there's, there's not really a heap to talk about with this. It basically does what it says. It gives you two AC outlets, maximum uh, 200 watts. Now, of course, um, that is, of course, limited. The 200 watts is limited to whether your battery can output 200 watts. Okay, so check the specs on your battery uh, or go, go to your battery manufacturer's website before you try to put 200 watts, uh, watts through this. Um, but look, where I think this will come in super handy for people is gaffers who are starting out, so the young guys. So you might have second-hand equipment you've bought, like, say, a Dito 100 or a Dito 150. You could use this to run a Dito 150 off a V-Lock battery and run it through the Dito controller. So you can, you can dim it and all that sort of stuff, which you can't do if you're running directly off a battery. So that could come in handy for that. Now, what I, where I use this predominantly, what I, I like using it for is if I've got a situation where, uh, let's say I've got a backlight that I need to put up on a set, and I can't get a power cable to it, so something like an LED panel, something like that, and the set's locked off. So we're doing a, a time lapse or something like that where the camera is locked off and the set can't be interrupted. So um, basically I'll get two massive high capacity batteries, stick them on this, and uh, that'll power a 50, watt, um, a 50 watt LED panel for pretty much about eight hours uh, running off two high capacity V-locks. So it comes in really, really handy for giving me that extra run time when I need it. Now where this also comes in handy is uh, if your batteries start getting a bit old. So um, these batteries here are um, amongst my oldest batteries. And as they get old, the, um, the watt hour uh, capacity of the batteries depletes. So these were originally 220 watts, now they're um, a 100 watt hour equivalent. So you get to the point where um, you end up with a lot of batteries um, you know, if you run batteries for long enough, you end up with a lot of batteries that by themselves don't have a lot of output. But basically I can get two batteries which are, uh, are matched up in terms of how worn out they are or how expired they are, um, link them together and now I've got um, a 200 watt hour battery. Okay, so I'm, I'm, it, this device enables me to put some extra longevity into the, the running life of my batteries. So, so that's pretty cool. Now the other thing that's interesting is one of these batteries by themselves, um, uh, 100 watt hours, um, so basically what I've done is I've put a 100 watt uh, light onto this and it ran it for an hour, so that's how I've come up with the rating. If I link the two batteries together, I don't get 200 watts. Um, what tends to happen is I get around uh, 250, 260, 270 watt hours because the batteries, uh, the cells in the batteries have still got the power store there to some degree. They just struggle to get it out. So um, where this comes in handy, having this uh, shark fin, is you're spreading the load on the batteries, you're spreading the, the, um, the workload. So that, that can come in particularly handy if you're running big lights, like say, uh, Aperture 300D, Forza 500, stuff like that. Shark fins can come in really handy for taking the strain off the battery. So they're sharing the strain over two batteries, not just copying it on one. So these are a little bit expensive. This is uh, made by um, Core. Um, this is available, I think, through B&H also, this is as well. I think this is about um, 160 to 180 US dollars, but it is solidly constructed. It's not gonna, it's not gonna come apart, especially with the, the weight of two batteries on it. Um, so look, look, I hope this uh, episode's been helpful to you. Um, uh, I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.